let's talk motion operators, let's talk mops and build this thing here, this flip display. So after you install mops, you will see those toolbars up here containing a few nice tools for mops. However, we'll be working in the node view mainly. And in order to generate this flip display, let's just start by dropping down in GeoNode, diving in there. And in here, let's drop down the core tool of mops, which is the instancer, which is basically what copy to points does with a few extras. And in here, we can feed geometry. For example, our trusty old pig head. In this case, I'm just gonna set it to easy and maybe a platonic, wire this in here as well. And then on the instancer, you have lots of options, what to do and how to distribute those objects. So under distribution, this is currently set up to be a grid. We can switch between a fixed step size or a fixed number. And just in this case, increase the distance. So my objects are properly spaced apart. And by default, the instancer is set up to automatically alternate between those incoming geometries here. Let's reset that to the fixed size. And instead of piping in those two geometries, let's just delete them. And instead, just use a simple box, which I'll just scale along the Z direction so it's flat, maybe like so and maybe dial back its uniform scale to 0.1, like so. Goes into the instancer, let's highlight the instancer, and we can see this grid appearing here. Let's get those individual copies, those instances a bit closer together so that they have a tiny bit of space in between them, like so. Also, let's increase the grid's size to say eight by eight. And now those should be the individual pixels of our flip display. Maybe make this bigger, 10 by 10. The way that MOPS works is it uses a fall off, so a value ranging from zero to one on each of those copies to determine how strongly to affect a given instance. For example, we could use a MOPS shape fall off, wire this in after the instancer, and check preview fall off here. So we can see now we are getting this fall off from one on the white side to zero on the black side. I want that to be exactly inverted and I'll just take the easy route and just scale this by minus one. And now let's animate this fall off, transforming it a bit like so, moving it outside of the grid, keyframing the translation by alt clicking on here, then going to maybe frame 48, moving this thing down here so everything is white now. Again, alt clicking on this here and maybe shift clicking in here to tweak those curves to not be interpolated, but linear. Let's just toggle real time, reset this and just play it. Okay, we are wiping this fall off value through our copies here. Next, let's just flip them one by one using a transform modifier. So after you applied a fall off onto each of your instances in mobs, you can transform them or you can modify them using that fall off using a magnitude of modifiers. In this case, let's just transform them on their rotation axis. In this case, I think it's either X or Z. Let's rotate them by 90 degrees. Let's run the animation. So yeah, we are flipping those upwards now. Pretty unspectacular. Let's try combining this animated fall off that we have here with an image as a fall off. In this case, I need a mops fall off and it's called texture fall off. So let's wire that in here, highlight this and also check preview fall off. In this case, as always, I need to invert my V coordinate on my texture so it sits upright. And then I'll select a different texture on here. So go to my file open dialog and scroll down here and take this image of Isaac Newton. Let's just wire this into our transform modifier just straight ahead and maybe on here uncheck preview fall off. And you can see we are now flipping those instances where we had black or darker values in our image. However, if we hit play now, nothing happens because the fall off is not animated. So let's combine this texture fall off with the hand animated shape fall off that we just created using the mops combine fall offs. It has two input slots, one for the texture, one for the shape fall off and the resulting fall off goes out here. And I want to set my blend mode to multiply. So the fall off value coming into the texture is multiplied by this wipe that we set up here. So now we are getting this. Our boxes flip where we have bright values and remain unchanged where we have dark values. However, for the final rendering, I want to flip this as I want to have dark boxes which flip up in the dark areas. So let's in the texture fall off in the remap tab, just check fit and switch the output min and max. So we just inverted these values basically. Now again, let's hit play. And yeah, that's working as I'd expected. In order to view this effect a bit better, I'll append a standard color sop after the transform modifier, highlight this and set this to be a black or rather dark color like this. So now again, we can see Newton appearing there by those flipped boxes. However, this animation is not the most exciting one. So let's add a bit of wiggle to it using the mops spring modifier. 
which I'll wire in after the combined falloffs, before the transform modifier, make sure our scene is reset. And then on the spring modifier, I'll uncheck position scale rotation and instead check falloff. This will apply a spring effect to the animated falloff only, which we're gonna use in the following node to actually transform those instances. And that's my preferred way of working with the spring modifier. In the solver settings, let's just reset the simulation and hit play. And that's exactly what we wanted. We now have this wiggly, springy behavior of our individual boxes when they come up. One more thing I'd like to mention about mops is when you middle mouse on this, the falloff is stored in an attribute called mops underscore falloff. And this is just an attribute, just a standard Houdini attribute. So this can be used in any setup. And what I often do is use those falloffs to drive more intricate animations or more intricate setups that do not necessarily rely purely on mops nodes. But I just found it easier to have those encapsulated falloff values in my mops falloff nodes which I can use with basically any setup. I just have to make sure to evaluate the mops falloff value and then basically do stuff with it. Also, the mops nodes are unlocked so you can actually dive in there and see what's going on under the hood. And also, if you right click on them and select allow editing of contents, then you are able to actually dive in and modify them at will. So they're a great tool to look inside another developer's or another TD's head to figure out his or her thought process behind creating such a node. If you guys like what we're doing and want to support us, you might want to head over to our Patreon. And we'd like to thank all of our patrons, especially Rafik Anadol, Chris Hebert, Important Looking Pirates, Encore VFX, Patrick Fillion, and Gearbox Studio Quebec. Thanks so much, guys.